Good morning, family in Jesus. Uh, this morning, if you want to follow with uh, in the Word of God, I'm just going to be reading a scripture this morning. The Lord laid on my heart uh, out of Romans chapter 8. So if you want to follow with this morning, I'll be reading out of Romans chapter 8. Beautiful piece in the Word of God. The Bible says here, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of the sin of death. For what the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of a sinful man to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in sinful man in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled and fully met in us who do not live according to the sinful nature but according to the spirit. Uh, verse 5, those who live according to the sinful nature, have their minds set on what that nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. That is such a beautiful piece there. So I can determine in this brand new day that the Lord has given me um, where, where my heart lies. So if I am led by the Holy Spirit, my mind will be set permanently on what the Spirit of God wants me to do and say. The Bible goes on in verse 6, the mind of a sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. So here we can clearly see in the Word of God, it is um, word for word stated in the word of God that we need to allow the Holy Spirit to control our minds. Now there's an alternative to that. If the Holy Spirit doesn't control our minds, then something or someone of this world will definitely control our minds. So that is the one piece of us as human beings, mind, body, soul, uh, and spirit, that can be controlled is our minds. So, again, verse 6, the mind of a sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the spirit is life and peace. The sinful man is hostile to God, does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Verse 8, those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. So here's the, the, the flip side of the, the coin. Is if my mind is not controlled by the Holy Spirit, it will be controlled by sin. And, and as Paul teaches us, then I am a slave to, to sin. Uh, verse 9, you however are controlled not by the sinful nature but by the spirit if the spirit of god lives in you and if anyone does not have the spirit of christ he does not belong to christ so that is a um that's a a, a mark for us as disciples of jesus to know and to see it is confirmation for me and, and for you, brother and sister in Christ, to know whether I belong to Christ or not. If I have the, the Holy Spirit, the Bible goes on, verse 10, but if, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also 
give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who lives in you. This is a beautiful piece, a powerful piece in the Word of God that clearly teaches us that the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead is living in us today. The Bible goes on, verse 12, Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not um, to the sinful nature to live according to it. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Verse 14, because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Amen. Verse 15, for you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave to fear, but you received a spirit of sonship. That is a powerful scripture, brother and sister in Christ. I clearly felt led this morning to, to minister this um, scripture uh, to, to you. There's someone out there that's, that must hear that you are a son and a daughter of God if you are led by the Holy Spirit. If you are obedient to the Spirit of God and, and to go where He leads you and, and to, to do what He tells you to, to do and say what he, he leads you to say, you are a son and a daughter of God. Then it ends in verse 16, the Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of um, God and co-heirs of Christ, if indeed we share in His suffering in order that we may also share in His glory. Amen. This is a powerful scripture this morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Me as human being, me as Jacques, I... I don't have, I mean, anything more to add to this, this scripture. I don't have anything of my mind or of my flesh to, to add to it. This scripture in itself is powerful, knowing that if I allow the Holy Spirit to control my mind, then I am not a slave to sin anymore. And if I have the Holy Spirit, it is a mark for me to know that I am a son of um, God, that you are a son or daughter of God. This is a powerful scripture this morning. And whoever needed to hear it, I pray that the Holy Spirit will minister deeper in, in your life concerning this um, scripture. Um, please join me in prayer now. Thank you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you this morning, Lord Jesus, for this beautiful, powerful scripture. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for the power of your word and the truth of your word. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that we have the privilege in this beautiful country that you have blessed us with to this morning be able to sit still and spend time with each other in your word. Lord Jesus, like, like in, in the book of Acts, in the old times, Lord Jesus, when they were establishing your churches, this is what they did as a family. They sat down, Lord Jesus, and they went through your word. They went through your scriptures and and your, your Holy Spirit through your scriptures ministered to, to them. I pray that today, Lord Jesus, that your Holy Spirit through this powerful, beautiful scripture in Romans 8, Lord, that you will minister to our hearts and our, our souls and our spirits this morning and that you, will, that, that you will encourage us and motivate us, edify us, build us up, Lord. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We thank you. You are our God. We bring you glory, Lord, honor, praise, and thanks. Everything that we have, everything that we are, everything that, that, that we think we own, Lord Jesus, it all belongs to you and it all comes from you, Lord Jesus. We pray that this day will be filled with the glory of Jesus Christ, that we as, as temples of the Holy Spirit will display splendor of Jesus. 
thank you, Lord Jesus. We bring you glory, honor, praise, and thanks, and we pray and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, family, in Jesus. I hope and pray that today you will have a blessed day today. I hope and pray that a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit will rain down on you. Whatever you have been calling out and crying out to the Lord for, I pray that this will be the day that the Lord will give it to you. And until we meet again tomorrow, be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.